When you think of political radicals, you probably don't think of Generation Y, today's crop of 18 to 30s. And yet this generation might just represent the biggest political revolution since the Second World War. A generation which redefines politics and our society in its own image, just as that great post-war generation did 70 years ago. And we're not talking about technology, how we're tweeting or texting. We're talking about a revolution in how we're thinking. They might not know it, but if Generation Y has a spiritual home, then it's here at the Economist Towers, the home of the magazine which for centuries has espoused a form of political, social and economic liberalism which is precisely where my generation is at. Well, they hold a lot of views that conventionally would be called right-wing, certainly on economic matters. They're more likely to support privatisation, more instinctively comfortable with uh, business, more comfortable with the role of the private sector, and less comfortable with the role of the monolithic welfare state. On social issues, however, they're more um, conventionally left-wing. Um, they're liberal on matters of sexual and racial and uh, other forms of cultural identity. So they're a mixture of both, but certainly on economic matters, they tend to the right. They are more individualistic than previous generations were at the same points in their lives. So this is more than just an age effect, as sociologists call it. It's a generational effect. Data from pollsters Ipsos Mori confirms this view. For example, when asked whether taxes should go up to support increases in unemployment benefit, Generation Y were the least likely to think that they should. Their parents at the same age, on the other hand, were overwhelmingly in favour. Rather than relying on pollsters and journalists in London, Newsnight decided to test this in an unscientific way ourselves, going to Bramcook College in Nottinghamshire to talk to some of the younger members of Generation Y. Should job seekers allowance be time limited? Yes. All of you think yes. Why? I think that it gives people an incentive that if they've got a time limit then they know that they have to work especially hard to get a job or to, to find some other way and I think that we need that incentive with the society that we've got now because too many people are relying on the benefit system to give them what they need. It's like the tough love way. It would encourage people to not spend essentially too much time or their entire lives perhaps not contributing to society. And I feel that the, a ticking time bomb situation is perhaps what would motivate people to go find a job. And even though some have described them as the jilted generation, they don't seem too keen on robbing the old rich to feed the young poor. Should the government have an inheritance tax? As Martin said, it's just legalised grave robbing. Um, if a person their entire life has, has worked and tried to create something and then they want to pass it on to the next generation, then I don't think the government should have any say or power in, in what happens. They saw it as their responsibility to get a job, thought they should pay their own tuition fees and generally want to be self-reliant. The question is, why has this shift taken place? One man who thinks he knows the answer is Ryan Shorthouse, who, from his own front room in East London, runs his think tank, Bright Blue, which promotes and lobbies for economic and social liberalism in the Conservative Party. I think this is generation DIY, do it yourself. I think, you know, there's been a huge rise in the number of young people who are self-employed, a 55% rise since 2000. A lot of people have adopted Thatcher's views around the economy, a belief in a small state, privatisation, uh, but also, you know, political discourse is dominated by ambition, opportunity. They're words that are often put out there and, and have been adopted by both the Thatcher government and the new Labour government. And I think young people have really swallowed that. <laughs> But are we missing the bleeding obvious? This is the first generation to grow up with the internet as an ever-present force in their lives. The Ephra Social in Brixton used to be John Major's conservative club, but is now a kick Gem Y bar, complete with original decor. Generation Y journalists inside explain to me just how the internet has shaped their own individualistic tendencies. Um, we all grew up in the age of the internet, uh, which has um, given us a thirst for um, individualism and has actually also made us quite competitive um, 
documenting our lives competitively on social media. We're the social media generation and it's all me, me, me and that's that's kind of good if you can kind of harness it into uh, a positive thing. The rise of this new selfie generation poses huge questions and the biggest one of them is probably this. Can our social institutions, those forged in an era of collectivism, the NHS, the welfare state, trade unions, the BBC, maybe even the idea of the nation itself, survive the transition to my generation where the individual is king?